Um, for anybody that doesn't know who we are, um, I am Siri over here. Where yep, there's the cursor, <laughs> and I run a team out here in California. And then we've got Jordan here, who runs the team out in Colorado. And our goal here is to bring you as much value as we can on um, how to build teams. You know, just inside and out operations, different things like that, which. Actually leads us to what we're going to be going over today and Jordan Aaron. I'll let you guys take it from here. But I, what we want to do is also bring in the operation, the backbones of these teams. Tell a little bit about how they got started their journeys and uh, some superpowers. So you guys, what are we talking about today? Yeah. So, uh, last week we had the privilege of hanging out with, uh, Siri and Liv, um, who live is a uh, series kind of creative uh, mind behind the scenes for brand realty and and we got to see some back uh, office stuff of what's going on there and it was super helpful for I, i'm guessing a lot of us but today i i wanted to bring in aaron it, aaron's birthday today too <gasps> happy birthday yeah aaron. happy birthday <laughs> if we were birthday, to know that aaron. we would have put a little party hat <laughs> I <know>. on <laughs> i would have put a birthday hat on your picture yeah <laughs> that's probably why we didn't let you know <laughs> uh, okay <laughs> We, we um, may, we have a whole hour. So just I know, I'm like, wait oh, a yeah. minute, pause. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, so Aaron is our director of operations um, and, and really like from a, from a standpoint of, of our, our skill sets and gift mix as I'm, I'm truly more of a visionary and he's truly more of an integrator. And so we work really, really closely and um and so Aaron's really been been the backbone of our team's growth and our continued growth uh, for the last two years now. So I, I think Aaron, you've been with me two years total. Is that right? Yeah, two years to this month, I think. So, um, and so uh, uh, we're gonna we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna take you guys on a quick uh, journey of our our year by year progress. So so last week, um, actually. Seven days ago, exactly, was my six-year anniversary from getting my real estate license and starting in the real estate business. And so I'm just going to take you guys quickly year by year what we were thinking, learning, and developing um, each year and where we are today from just an organizational structure um, and different pain points. And so different team leaders are at different places. And so my hope is that, because a lot of times um, along the way, I would talk to these massive teams and I would hear the stuff that they're doing and it was just overwhelming. I was just like, I can't think that far ahead. Like I'm, I'm still just, I have three agents and one admin. So what you're talking about doesn't make any sense to me. And so I'm going to take you through those different steps and what moves we made along the way to get where we are today. Cause now we're a, a pretty large organization and um, we've learned some lessons over the way. So with all that said, Aaron, you want to jump and share the slides? Yes. Give me one minute. Is Aaron able to share slides? <laughs> Thumbs up. Let's see. Hold on one second. I'm loading it. <clears throat> so, um, but yeah, so 2017 was year one and we, uh, it, it was just like many of you team leaders, you got your license and started selling some houses. And, um, next thing you know, you started realizing that you needed to make some moves. How many people's screens look like Aaron's with, uh, 700 tabs. Yeah. Hold on. I'm having <laughs> lots, <laughs> lots, lots of hands when yeah. I live. Yes, I was I've like, Oh me for sure. <laughs> Can we also acknowledge little Leo here on the video? I see a little cute guy. Look at him. Look at it. Hi. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> All right. So, um, so yeah, 27. I, I'll, I'll just go ahead and get started, Aaron. You can get started. Share. Let me yeah, pull it up. It's yeah. So 2017, away. I got licensed and I, like many of you started trying to figure out what was, what, what where was I going to go with this business? Um, and uh, I, pounded sand for about four months trying to figure out how to make money. Um, but I, I quickly made some moves. I month one, I hired a coach, um, which was four months before I sold a house. Um, I started building a website. 
I like, like most people jump into real estate, but they don't treat it like a business. They just hope to sell houses and make money. But I, I truly started thinking of this, like if I was going to start any business, if I was going to start a coffee shop, I would probably have to go get a business loan and, and rent a place and invest a bunch of money. And so uh, I treated my business like a business from day one and, and really looked at how am I going to invest in it? So I'm going to take you year by year. Uh, Aaron, let's start with 2017. Okay. If I change it to presenter view, let, let me know if you all still see it just fine. We're seeing some loading. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <clears throat> you can do the other one, Aaron. It's fine. Operations yeah, just, at its finest. Yeah. Just do the other one. It's okay. Oh, wait. Here we go. There we go. Are we still um, there? <clears throat> yep. We're good. So when, when I first started my team, I, I had a company help me with branding and we came up with the idea that we're going to call it the Jordan Terrell Group. I'll get to the community piece here in a, in a little bit, but we call it the Jordan Terrell Group um, because I decided that um, my previous career led me to have a lot of relationships in my name. Um, I knew a lot of people. And so we decided that we we're going to call it a group, even though it was just me and it sounded better than just me. And so <laughs> um, I just, I was always like, my mindset was always whatever perception I create out there becomes everyone's reality. So if everyone thinks that I'm bigger than I actually am, then, then maybe they'll think I'm bigger than I actually am. And, uh, it came to fruition, but the first year it was just me. Um, I told you I started in February by, by month, June, I was, I had four deals pended. That was my first month that I made money. And I put four deals under contract. And by the end of the year, December, I had sold 30 houses. So somehow in that seven month period, I found a way to, to sell 30 houses and I was overwhelmed. Um, I, I, uh, everything was hitting the, the ceiling. Um, my vacation sucked. My work life balance sucked. I needed some leverage. And so uh, moving on to 2018, I realized I needed more support. Um, Aaron, so yeah. Next slide, 2018. I added uh, one agent to my team and I added a staff person. And um, my admin, it was kind of flying, you know, building the plane as we flew it. Uh, I She was helping me with transaction management. She was helping me with my schedule. She was helping me schedule showings. Um, and then the other agent was basically taking anything left over that, you know, leads that we were generating, um, referrals that we were getting. Uh, the other agent was helping me with that and we created a, a, a split structure but quickly um we found ourselves you know that first year i told you we did 30 well in 2018 between me and this other agent we sold 75 homes and i was still trying to figure out how to how to you know manage uh my own business and it was just happening really quickly um and so we were generating and leads at this point uh go ahead aaron Oh, keep, keep going. I have a question for you. Yeah, we were generating well, leads and we just didn't have the ability to keep up with them all. We weren't following up. We were wasting money on leads. Um, but that this is this is where we started finding ourselves in a kind of a new pain point. Aaron, what were you going to ask? Well, and as you were in this transactional load happening, now you have a team of three. Oh, what... What percentage of your time were you spending in production and what percentage was it in terms of cultivating the team and, and the focus on the team? Uh, I was a full-time agent. I, I was working 60 hours a week as an agent, but what I did is every time uh, some, you know, the other agent, which soon became more agents had questions. I, I only answered their questions over zoom. Um, and I recorded every session and I archived every video and I had my admin tag that video as, you know, a training on whatever topic. And so I was leveraging my time that way because there's questions. I just didn't want to answer the questions twice. And so it was a little bit of a, a shit show from a standpoint of trying to be a full-time agent and train other agents and train an admin. Um, but if you're a team leader, you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> and we didn't even have budgets at this time. We didn't have a PL. <laughs> we we were just selling houses as fast as we could um and learning. And you know, the the wheels were wobbly as can be. Um 
which is funny. Fast forward where we are today, and they still feel wobbly in a different way. But <laughs> well, and a little backstory too. Uh, so at this stage, you know, I wasn't on the team, but I was a client of Jordan's. Uh, I always had investing as a side hustle, and so from my perspective, it was a pretty high level, you know, happening operation from other real estate agents I worked with. So from the client standpoint, we didn't see what was going on under the hood, but it looked good. Um, some questions are coming in. Um, how many of you are, oh, okay, sorry. Oh, it was me. I was just curious, like drop in, you know, how many of you are at this point? I, I find it interesting because I, it, and this is great, by the way, to see it broken down like this, because I think this is where people need to see. Because a lot of times there'll be this point where they're like, okay, enough, ban abandon ship. And then they, they dissolve the team. And so I'm at burn down and rebuild. Yes. <laughs> uh, another th like at this point, we were meeting every day as a team. Every morning, we had an 8 a.m. huddle, jump on uh, a Zoom call, or maybe just a phone call. Like, hey, I'm going to merge the call with the three of us, you know, like, but, but I had us every morning talking, uh, talking about our day, who's working on what, who's, who's got a point, you know, and we're just working together. And um, the other agent was Scott, and he was kind of taking a little bit of the overflow of the stuff I couldn't handle. And Amber was our admin. And, you know, I hired her to work 20 hours a week, but she worked 40 hours a week month two. I mean, it just, I was like, yeah, I think I need you part-time. And then it was like, I need you like, uh, a lot more time. So 2019, let's go ahead and jump to 2019. Uh, we realized we needed more agents. So sorry, <laughs> we, we added uh, additional, you know, we had a total of five agents on the team and we realized we needed help with lead follow-up. And so I hired an ISA and an in-seat ISA. And that was a big move for me. It was scary. It was I had it adding a second staff person and I needed somebody to manage our CRM. I needed somebody to create, you know, flows and systems and uh, action plans and all the things to just because we were spending money on leads and we, we weren't following up with them. And we knew that if somebody was actually caring about it, then we might actually get more of a return on our investment. And my theory from day one with ISAs was I'm not going to give it to someone overseas. I'm not going to uh, pay someone some low amount of money. I'm going to pay an ISA really well because the ISA is the face of the company. They're the first person that interacts with the lead. And so I need that person to be high, high uh, skilled and quality. And so we set up a, a pay structure that we could afford a really um, quality ISA. And so. Would, would you say that this was uh, kind of an organized mess at this point or where, where would you say that you felt you were? Um, we were, I mean, it's still an organized mess, Siri. Um, uh, it always feels that way because here, here's what I've learned about. Um, if you feel like your, your business is messy, it's because you're growing. It's because you want to grow. If, if, if everything's perfect and calm, storm is on its way in, in either a good way or a bad way. Um, and so if you're pushing forward, you're, you're going to be messy, um, all the time, but this at this point um, in 2019, uh, we were really trying to scale and and I was trying to figure out how to get other agents really successful. So I was training at a high level, um, you know, constantly on the phone with other agents in their deals, helping them with their contracts, um, while also trying to manage my own and trying to figure out how to leverage staff and and to take some of the pain off of. Um, you know, we were, we were really pushing social media at this point. Um, but we felt the biggest pain point at this time was we were starting to make some serious money and we didn't have any finance <laughs> structure. Um, it just was a little messy. We luckily we were making more money than we were spending. Um, so, you know, we weren't creating a financial hardship, but we just didn't have a, a good process in place so we could really see where all the dollars were going. And so we needed to up our staff, but in order to up our staff, we needed to up our agents. Um, so that kind of pulled us into 2020. And I think in 2019, hey, go ahead. I was going to say, where did you identify these agents, admin, ISAs? Like, how did you attract talent? Um, well, I was really loud on social media. And so people were watching me 
grow my business pretty quickly. So 20, like I said, 2017, I sold 30 homes on my own, you know, big deal, but I, I was a brand new agent. So it's not bad. Um, 2018, we sold 75, um, 2019, um, we were growing. So I didn't have four agents or five agents at the start of 2019. We had five agents by the end of 2019, but we sold, I believe 101 homes that year. And we kind of broke the hundred, uh, unit, um, ceiling. And, um, but we were attracting people because we were really loud on social media. So people were seeing me grow and were saying, I want to be a part of that. Why, why is this brand new agent selling so many houses? I want to, I want to, I want to hitch my wagon to, 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 to that guy. And so we're attracting that way. And, but this is also how we attracted staff. We would just post at like social media, like we're hiring and we would get resumes through our networks. So uh, at this point, we were really attracting a lot of staff and agents just from people we knew. We weren't recruiting at all. Yeah, it looks like then questions on the chat around virtual assistants, VAs, uh, and we'll we'll get to some of that here as well because that becomes part of the journey. Let's jump to 2020. Um, so we scaled up. Um, we at this point had about nine agents, including myself. Um, and I added another admin. So at this point, it became clear that I needed um, some support on the listing side. Um, one of my coaches said, hey, you need a listing coordinator. Um, you're spending too much time coordinating all the stuff with listings and inputting MLS stuff and ordering staging and managing it all. And, and so I, I listened and I hired that listing coordinator. So now I had kind of a general admin. I had an outsourced TC and an internal listing coordinator and then a full-time ISA. Um, and we really, at this point, felt like a pretty big team. There was, um, you know, 13, 14 people together working um, nonstop. And then COVID hit. Um, and COVID was, as you remember, um, uh, it, 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 there was a lot of pain in this. Um, and, you know, we thought that, you know, I was nervous wondering if we were even going to be able to continue operating and, and pay the bills and keep these staff on. But um, as you guys all remember, our business has exploded. Um, that year, we ended up selling 161 units. Um, and we broke 100 million for the first time uh, in volume. And so, uh, but again, learning lots of lessons, but also seeing an opportunity to continue to grow. Um, but what questions uh, come up for you, Aaron? Because this is right before you jumped in, because this is when I started to see I'm incapable of organizing this business past this stage. I can lead, I can uh, inspire, I can attract, but I am now um, working at a level where I don't have the skill set or the leadership, organizational leadership to manage what's happening. Like if we want to get from 13 people to 20 people, I need someone else that can help me operate a business because we're, we're now becoming a small business. We're not just a bunch of, you know, me and my buddies selling houses. We're, 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 mm -hmm. we're doing a hundred million in volume, um, which is, you know, we're, we're now bringing in, uh, well over a million dollars in GCI, like th there's real dollars moving around and I need to get serious about how I'm operating this business. So that's where my head was at. So Jordan, one of the questions is, are you still in production at this point or what, what did that look like for you? I'll, uh, I'll, I'll get to that in just a minute. Cause that, a lot has changed for me in the last uh, 12 to 15 months. But in, in 2020, 2020, you were oh, very oh, much I'm sorry. in production. In 2020, yes. I, 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 oh, I, I was, so the, the, the trick for me is I was carrying the team, um, meaning my commission, even in 2020, represented uh, almost 40% of our overall GCI, maybe 50%. And I mean, I, so arguably I was paying for everything. Um, and I was kind of dragging some people with me. And so from a financial standpoint, I'm always thinking in my head, could I just get rid of everybody and just keep all the commission and have have more functional situation here and make more money? 
And, but I was really loving the idea that I was helping these other agents build their businesses. And like, I was just getting so much out of that. I loved it. And so, so I have a quick, so, I have a question, well, Mark, Mark has, that's my fear carrying the team. Mark, I just curious what yours, where are you at right now? I just started the team. So okay. I, I, uh, I kind of went back and forth with it. I started looking at it at Tom Perry Blueprint last year and decided I was going to, I started out thinking SEAL team and then I had bigger aspirations. And then I talked to KC McCown at, at Summit last year who had just blown up his team. And I was like, you're right. I'm a bottom line guy. I'm 52 years old. I don't, I don't want to be in the business of, of giving away money to 10 other people just so I can say I have a team. But now I've got, I, 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 both what Jordan just said, I, I want to build a team because I want to help people build their businesses. And that's one reason I came to real, because if I build something, help them build something and they leave, at least I'm still invested in their success. But I also just, I want a little more flexibility. I'm an empty nester now, and it would be nice to have a team in place that if I go away for a weekend, I have a little bit of support. So I, I go back, this is the the devil and angel on my shoulder all the time. Do I, do I want to like carry a team with my 20 or 30 million dollars in production? and work myself into the ground trying to support a team or do I want to try to cultivate it and build something so I I don't need to be the do the guy doing 20 or 30 million dollars anymore to support things then I can I can help cultivate the talent right well it hits in with what you're saying Jordan so so what happened in the following year is going to really uh maybe speak some insight to where you're at and and um and and I'll, I'll speak to that here um so let's jump to 2021 um so 2021 um a couple things happened that were really big a we increased we brought transaction management in-house um we added another admin so now i have a, a full-time personal assistant kind of office manager i have a full-time tc full-time listing coordinator a full team of isas in seat um and i brought in a director of operations um which is aaron and the other thing that happened is not only did we increase agent count, but I um, implemented a uh, a partner role, an agent partner role, where uh, one of the agents became my partner, um, my my production partner. And so uh, that agent was carrying about 75% of the workload of my production. Um, I was giving up part of my, I was paying them a salary. I was paying them percentage bonuses of, of all the commission um, and they were managing my production. And for them, the win was they got to sell 77 homes in 2021. My production was 77 homes um, and they got to make um, really good money um, without having to hunt. They didn't have to figure out how to find 77 clients. Um, the win for me is I was working about 10 hours a week on my production versus 60. Um, so for me, it was a very good ROI of my time, but which then in turn, I gave all the rest of my time to the leadership and the training, the coaching of agents and the leadership and uh, coaching structure of the staff, um, which Aaron stepped in as director of operations um, to really help manage the, the overall business. But man, uh, Aaron, this is, this is when you jumped in. So maybe uh, speak to um, what what environment you were walking into, and then if if uh, anybody has questions about that partner production partner role, um, I can speak to that. Yeah, <clears throat> um, as I entered the scene here, it was apparent that yeah that we needed to continue to build structure. Uh, we had you know Jordan and I were using this. Um, model uh it's from eos and this book called rocket fuel that you know every business takes you know two entrepreneurs to lead a visionary and an integrator and you know there's assessments that you can take to you know kind of look at where um people fall in that and so as the the integrator it's really you know jumping into the the management of a lot of the day-to-day -day and trying to be in, in you know i'm Jordan and I are both growing in this, but <clears throat> being the filter of the, you know, 20 ideas in a given week, what is realistic that we can <clears throat> implement? What is the impl implementation plan we put into place? Uh, really, how do we, how do we create an environment where we can uh, grow 
in a reasonable way that we don't, you know, get ahead of our skis, if you will. And so we had um, a lot of like good decisions to make. And I think Jordan, for you, one of the things was, I think as you were leading this business and being a team leader and wearing both these hats, if you, you know, if we're going to continue to use this visionary integrator role, it really gave, I think Jordan an opportunity now to just really um, be free from a lot of the, the level of detail and basically bring his best contribution. And then for me, I was really, I mean, I was learning a little bit along the way of, of a new industry. But what my challenge was, is looking at the, the structure that was already in place. And I think someone mentioned in the chat, like not burning it to the ground and rebuilding it, but then how do we, how do we scale now? And how do we um, find ways to bring agents on and attract agents and maintain them. And I think, Jordan, I don't know if it was 2021, but I would say one of our biggest light bulbs that have gone off is redefining who is our ideal client. And yeah, well, well I want to we'll I want to jump to that after 2022, there. but um, uh, yeah, I mean, we we this was a year of of adding structure, and and honestly, we 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 killed it. We did, um, I think, we did two um, hundred and um, I, I don't know exactly where we were. It's 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 kind of a blur, but we we did a lot of units. Um, we sold a lot of homes, and we grew like crazy. And we really added a lot of structure and, and the structure came because I, I think as a team leader, you need to understand your gifts. And if it, you, you, you got to get really clear on what you're good at and you need to make sure that you're, you're off, you're, you're balancing the scales by bringing in the right people. And to me, I knew that I could, I can attract and I can lead people. I can inspire and I can galvanize and I can do all that. But I, I don't know. I can, I mean, like this morning, I, I don't even know where my wallet is. I don't know where my keys are. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Um, and so we, <laughs> I got it. Right I know here. this no. is true. I know this is true. I have a question. How did you and Aaron meet? I think some of the, the, you know, on this journey, I hear a lot of, you know, I hired the wrong, the wrong people and tell you, I, I have hired the wrong people too. <laughs> so, right. And so it's a journey to get the right people. I'm curious how you two met as well. How did that yeah, Aaron and I met in our previous careers and um, were acquaintances uh, for years, um, probably 15 years. And, um, and then we became, he became a client and I just got to see him um, in, in different lights. And I, I had a, a coach um, describe the role that he really felt like I needed in my business because I just needed organizational support, like someone that's a high level leader that can provide organizational support leadership to my really galvanizing leadership. Like I, I can do that well, but I, I, I needed some, someone to, to provide leadership to and just structure. And so Aaron just came top of mind. Like he literally popped up in my mind and I sent him a text and I said, Hey, hypothetically, would you be interested in this role? And he said, yes. And then I said, well, we need to talk. And, and that started a process of, of really um, figuring out what it would look like to get him out of his current career and into this. And, um, it's really become more of a partnership of 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 our leveraging each other's strengths, and so moving on to 2022, and I'll I'll um, I'll hit real quick uh, the partnership production partnership. As a team leader, you can either be a producer or you can be a team leader, but at some point you have to to give, and and there's two options. Once you give up your production, you can either refer it to just every agent. Which, if you do that, you every time you refer all your business to every other agent. If that agent leaves, they're taking your business with them. And so I had to identify an agent on my team that I just was like, "Hey, I think we're gonna we're gonna run together for a long time." And so I brought her into this salaried role. I was like, "Hey, I'm gonna pay a base salary. Um, we're gonna work together every day. We're gonna be talking all day. And every time we have a client meeting, you're gonna be a part of that client meeting." Um, and basically she would take it from buyer consultation and listing consultation and take it to the close. And then I would send him a text or a, you know, weekly and check in here and there. And she would run the production. Um, she got paid well, I got paid well, but I got to free up my time. 
uh, at the same time, I was hiring Aaron to to really uh, to help with some of the structure. So this is some of the structure stuff we did. And let's kind of move through this, Aaron, because mm -hmm. we have some other fun stuff to talk through of where we're at today. Um, no, go back. Um, this is our agent. So at this point, we decided we needed we needed leadership within the agent. So we we had what we called uh, and it's a senior agent, but we called them um, uh, squad leaders. Squad leaders, right? Yeah. So each agent had a squad, and this agent was getting paid. I don't know if you can see my mouse. Can you see it? Um, I don't know. Um, Siri, can you see my mouse or no? No, I think you're, what do you, you probably only can oh, wait. see my... <laughs> that, okay. I see a, a mouse. <laughs> okay, so yeah, senior, agent, senior agent um, got paid a, a small bonus um, based on the agent's production with them. So if they hit a certain production level as a team, like if the four agents, then they got a bonus. And so they were kind of overseeing their agents, um, all the questions, uh, all the, you know, little trainings that would be needed. And um and so, and then we even started creating like competitions between them um, and then move over to the, uh, the, this is the staff side. So, so this is Aaron kind of creating his own leadership structure within the staff. Um, so we had a TC lead um, and we started realizing we needed some assistance because we were, we were over booking our TC um, and our listing coordinator. And so we brought in some assistance to help them. Um, at which point we started realizing we need um, we need someone on the finance side. Like we're a mess. We have a bookkeeper that's outsourced. We have a CPA that's outsourced, but we have no like financial structure. And so we started kind of looking at is anybody on our team capable of, of really managing finance? Um, and so, cause we were just a mess financially. Like we didn't have good books and you can't run a multi-million dollar business with bad books. Um, it's a problem. Um, and, uh, and not only that, at this stage, we transitioned to real. So we were, you know, with a previous brokerage that handled all of our commission splits and all of a sudden we're having to build big spreadsheets. And at the same time, we didn't, not realizing it, we had the tech with Sisu to be the hub of business to track all this. So honestly, we were discovering within our own tech processes that could really help us. But this was actually in 2021, really the first round of full hiring process we engaged and hired in three, you know, in-seat people here, which uh, I just think one of the biggest things is, is hiring takes way more time than I think any of us like go into the process think to make the right hires. So, so at, uh, at this point, we were, we were envisioning 2022 to be a massive growth year. And so we were going, all right, let's staff up. Let's staff up and attract a ton of agents and go sell a ton of houses. Like we have, we are ready. Let's go. Like we got this. And so we staffed up. We went from, from three staff to one, two, three, four, five, six, um, seven, which I'll show you. It, we, we just started really, because we have all the ISAs. So we had, we were at this point where we had 15, 16 agents and 10 staff, which is not a good ratio, if you're asking me. Um, but we were going, let's add 15 more agents. And like, this would be easy. Let's just keep going. And so we went into 2022, as Aaron said, with like a, a staff structure um, of now it was me. I had a director of agents overseeing all the agents with squad leaders and, you know, 20 plus agents. Aaron, director of operations, really helping be the bridge between everything. We had 10 staff ISAs um, uh, between the two of them and then some VAs, like we were staffing up. And as you remember last year, business was soaring. Uh, it was, I mean, we were, I think we did like 70% of our production from J January to July or January to June. Um, and then the market <laughs> swung fast as we all know. And um, if you have a ton of staff, you have a big payroll. Um, and it, it, it became a, a, a little bit of a problem. <laughs> and so, um, it, it, I mean, we, we were doing 40 deals a month uh, at this point. Um, and, and from June to July, we, our business cut in half. 
And we were like, whoa, um, all right, is this a problem or is this just like a little blip on the map? And um, and so we we made some um, like everybody we we uh, we're we're looking at where is where can we get better? What what are the efficiencies that we can create? And ultimately, we realized we got really complex. We got really complicated because what does growth do? Growth creates complexity. What does complexity do? It kills growth. So all of a sudden, we got really complicated. We had too we had too many things going on. And we needed it because this is what our org chart looked like. Um, and if you look to the left, guys, um, you, if you guys look to the left, it says micro team managing partner. Um, I talked about my production partner. Well, my production partner became a micro team within my team managing my production. Okay, so they were operating at this point. I'm working four hours a week at, at best on my production. Um, and I'm still getting paid commission as the team leader, but off of my micro team. Um, and then we had all these different roles and agents and different uh, things going on. And it just got really complex. And when things get hard, what, you can do one of two things. You can um, get frustrated or you can start looking for ways to get better. Um, I, I think everybody has either a revenue problem or an expense problem. And I chose to believe we had both. We needed more revenue. We needed to, in the, the ways that you can increase revenue is finding inefficiencies within your agents. Where, where can agents get better? What, you know, where, where can their conversion process get better? Um, how do you do more deals with the agents that you have? That's how you can increase revenue. The other way you can increase revenue is you can add more agents. Um, we had an expense issue. We were too complicated. Uh, so we can cut costs. We were spending money on things we didn't need to spend. So we started looking at ways that we we can shave dollars. And so we started lowering our expenses and increasing revenue. So while a lot of big teams in 2022 lost money and weren't profitable, we were profitable. We navigated um, the second half of that year. I wouldn't say really, really well, but we also, what is what does chaos often create? It creates innovation. Opportunity. <laughs> and opportunity. So um, any questions at this point before I kind of shift into to some of the innovative things that this all created, all these problems and all these things that we had to navigate? Siri, do you have any questions? No, I mean, I'm just like shaking my head because I understand all of what you're saying. I guess just to like, not so much a question, but just to kind of relay our, you know, a little bit of our journey last year too, is it was actually earlier in the year for us. It was like January, February, where I saw things really start to change, maybe even before that. And um, I had this sheet, like just pages long of all of the stuff that we were spending money on and all the little $15 here and all those things a month, right? And I remember just taking a highlighter through everything and saying, we don't need, we don't need, we don't need. And uh, we cleared up thousands of dollars every month on, every month on we don't need. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we also made the decision as well to say, we're growing, we're going to grow this. Here's the thing about growth is um, just because you have more agents doesn't mean that you're going to have more production. So for us last year, we had a, a, a really great year of growth, but our production wasn't wasn't all that. And of course it was a different year, but I am starting to see that change because typically, especially newer agents, uh, it just takes a while to get them up and going with things too. And so yes. what's that? Oh, I said, yep. Yeah. So, uh, you know, just to kind of relay on what you're saying is you have to, as a leader, see these things coming and you have to say, okay, how am I going to work on this? And no, it's not going to happen overnight, but you need to make all those changes and, and cut those things out make those, you got to be a fast mover and navigate through all this stuff. Right. And you just got to, you got to change and pivot as the market does too. Yep. So in 2022, uh, you can go back real quick. We were <clears throat> feeling the complexity and we realized we needed to do two things. We needed it to, to reorganize our staff into a better, more clear structure. 
that makes sense that ha that can handle growth that's scalable um where there's department heads like literally uh people who are owning entire processes and legs of the business and um and then we also needed to increase agents but we needed to increase agents in a way that that made sense that had proper training and development um, we needed our agents to see themselves as business partners with us not just as uh, receivers of leads that we just hand out like for fun but no we're in a business partnership we we have a staff and we provide services and agents are agents are in partnership with that so uh, this is when um, the Jordan Terrell group which is a group of agents and a group of staff we started to really see and ask the question who is our ideal client and I started asking that question hard and I said my ideal client isn't a buyer and a seller it is an agent. And so what can I do to provide amazing services to agents to help them grow their businesses and to attract more of them? So this is where community became a reality. Um, so then we've been working on this for the last six months. And so what happened is I took all of our staff, all the things that create leads, leadership, and leverage, and I pulled it away from the team of agents, the Jordan Terrell Group, and I rebranded it into a company called Community. And so now community is providing leads, leadership, and leverage to the Jordan Terrell group. But now we're also attracting agents in a solo role, like an individual agent role, uh, which they don't get leads, but they get leadership and leverage. So like an individual agent, we're also helping grow other teams. Um, so this also became, this is also the year in 2022 where we started having agents leave, move on. We helped them grow their businesses and become successful. And then they started to move on. And so this also became a pathway for agents to move on. Meaning if someone's really successful on my team and they want to grow their own team, they have two options. They can go grow their own team or I can help them grow it. And I can give them all the things that I was giving the Jordan Terrell group and I can give it to the Johnny Smith team or whoever. Um, and so let's let's break into showing you what our new staff structure looks like and what uh, our team structure looks like. So this is a partnership model. Everyone's a partner. Um, and it starts at the top. We have interns and junior partners, and it flows all the way down to becoming a senior partner. Um, and uh, what I love about this structure, just look at it from a, a standpoint of um, I like I like pipe. I like. I don't like the top-down model. I like the bottom-up model. Meaning, what's on the bottom supports everything above it. So, what we have now is everyone's a partner. We have a intern role, which is a paid internship, and we have junior partners. Um, those are brand new agents. Either one of them, you can either start as an intern or you can start as a junior partner. Either way, um, you're not going to make as much as as some of the other agents, but we're also holding your hand a little bit. Um, the senior partners at the bottom oversee and get commission splits from our interns and our junior partners. They're getting paid to support them. Our senior partners also, every senior partner, we have seven, eight senior partners. They're all our highest producers. Um, they are paired with partners, which are the a partner in the middle is like a normal agent, just like any other agent, like on most teams. Um, we also have SOI partners or just partners that aren't getting leads. Um, but our senior partners are paired with everybody. So everyone on our team has a senior partner who is their supervisor, if you will. And our senior partners are getting compensated commission from the people in their squad, if you will. Um, the interns and the junior partners are actually providing them with up to 10 to 15% of their commission. So each of our senior partners are earning 15 and $20,000 for every agent that's on their, on their team. Um, but our senior partners meet every week. I just got out of my senior partner meeting. They meet together and they make decisions. <laughs> they, imp they, they communicate strategies. They, they, whatever they decide gets implemented because they are running the agent team. They are overseeing the agent team. Um, they have ownership. They're getting paid to do it. They also get higher commission splits. Um, for their SOI, or they have the opportunity to, they also have a private office in my office building where they can use that private office because they are 
think of a law firm, you have senior partners, junior partners, all kinds of different things. They own the, the business um, or not own it, but they, they operate it. Um, so let's go down a little bit, Aaron, and okay. break into this a little more. Um, I just mentioned that the senior, the interns are a paid intern role, um, paid salary, and they're partnered okay. with a senior partner. So they're like, we talked about the production partners. Well, the interns become their production partners to help the senior then, partners scale their business. The junior question partners, is, okay. Sorry, in the chat, does the company pay for the intern salary? And we do, we, we pay for it for six months at a 50-50 split with the with the their senior partner so yeah the the senior partner is responsible for the full salary or part ultimately the full salary but we pay for half of it for the first six months as a contribution and helping that senior partner make that take that step um because it's it's you know for for an agent to take on a thirty six thousand dollars salary because it's three thousand a month base plus um, other commission splits. An intern should make somewhere between 60 and $90,000 um, in our market. And so they're responsible for the base salary, um, but we, we invest about 9,000 in that first six months and in, into that uh, salary. The junior partner is kind of a, a, from a equality standpoint about the same place. They're just not getting a, the, they're just not getting a, salary, it's all commission-based, but they're giving part of their commission to the senior partner. Um, and so it just, it, it, it gives, either way, the senior partner is getting commission and they're also training and developing future agents on our team. Go down to the next slide. Um, if you see at the top, we have partners and SOI partners. Um, uh, these are just agents. One on the left gets leads, the one on the right does not. And their splits reflect that. And if they want, they can graduate to become senior partners. And senior partners just have a bigger voice. They have better commission splits um, and they have voice into where we're going as a team. Um, any questions from you, Siri? This is, so this is our structure of how we have created an ecosystem where our agents are training agents and our language of partner has really helped us because we're in, we're in a partnership model. Everybody's, we're all partners. We have our part. And they have their part. And if we both so my, do our parts, then everybody wins. So my question is behind the scenes, I'm sure you have, you know, what what requirements get you from here to here to kind of your your levels, right? So there's there's probably a little bit more behind the scene as far as the breakdown of of who goes where. Every 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 uh, role has a graduation uh, a, a achievement that they have to hit. For instance, a junior partner has to have close eight deals to graduate graduate out of, of junior partner status. Um, a, um, and, a, and, a, and of those eight, four have to be SOI. Um, partners, in order for a partner to become a senior partner, they have to hit a certain level of production from their SOI. I don't wanna graduate people on company-driven business. I wanna graduate people because they've learned how to hunt on their own. Because I don't want to grow agents into being dependent agents. I want to grow agents into becoming independent agents. Because I'm not doing them any service for their life, for their families, if I'm making them dependent on the company. I want them to grow their own business. So let's move to the next slide. Um, the other piece of of co community is you can join us as a community agent or you can evolve off the team and just become a community agent which means they have a better split structure they're not getting leads but they're still and they have their own branding they can they can have their own little you know logo or whatever um, and they're just partnered with community they're not on the jordan terrell team anymore or they can evolve and become a team leader and have their own team and they can use the, the, the partner team structure for their team. Um, ultimately, community, we're creating pathways for our agents. We're also creating uh, opportunities to attract agents. So rather than me trying to be a team of just 20 agents or whatever we are, I'm trying to figure out, because a lot of 
because because the growth from here is what are we going to have a hundred agents on our on the Jordan Terrell group? No, I, that sounds like miserable to me. What I'd rather have is a hundred agents um, made up of individual agents, other teams, and each of those teams, I'm just supporting their leadership and on the back end. And uh, any questions on this structure? And right now, just so you guys know, we're at onboarding agents on the community agent side and on the team leader side. We're onboarding other teams. Which one do you have more of right now? Remember, when is um, it's uh, well, we haven't publicly launched it yet. We're just okay. talking to people. Yes. Um, and so we don't really know. We're just making sure that it's tight before we go public April 1st. Cool. Um, any other questions? One of the questions in the chat, do senior partners eventually transition into the Jordan Terrell group? Um, senior partners are part of the Jordan Terrell group, but if they want, I mean, again, I don't want to tell people where, where they should land. I want to create a pathway for them to grow wherever they want to grow. If they want to be an independent agent that just has lots of sphere deals and their phone just rings. Great. I can help support that. If they want to grow a team and become the John Smith group and have their own logo and have 20 agents on their team, great. I can support that. I can, I can, my staff can build, do all the lead generation, do all the transaction management and listing management and client support and all that kind of stuff. And they can just focus on selling houses and agents. Um, or they can just remain a senior partner or they can remain a partner. I don't care. Like it, I don't want to tell people what to do. I just want to create a structure for them to grow the business that they want. And I would just say again on the integrator side. So this is one of those big ideas that you know we have worked really hard now building out the the back end of the structure. What is the finance model? What are the marketing materials? What are the, the who do we need to hire? What's the right mix of resources? But we're like, you know, technically probably right around phase two out of the three phase approach of launching this. So yeah, yeah, community is a big idea <laughs> and I, I, I like big ideas. So let's move to the next slide and that will show you the uh, staff structure of community. So this is our staff structure of community. You have me as the, the visionary, uh, some of the my main roles. Aaron is the integrator in some of his main roles. And then we have departments. Um, overall, we have sales and marketing, ops, admin, finance, but sales and marketing is broken up into three. We have lead gen, which is overseen by di our director of lead generation, which is Matt. He uh, oversees all of our lead generation, dollar spend, um, conversion, ISAs, um, training agents, You know our partnerships with company, uh, with programs like Zillow Flex and Homelight and things like that. Like he's managing all that. Um, you can see my names down here, uh, marketing recruiting, because we're in the process of hard, hiring a marketing person. Um, but, uh, and I'll probably remain our primary recruiter because that's what I'm good at. Um, but this will be a seat at the table uh, of our leadership. The next one would be um, my name's still there because we're in the process of hiring a, a director of agent growth, which is their role would be to oversee all agents, whether they're on our on teams or individual solo agents, making sure not necessarily training all of them because our senior partners should train agents, but overseeing to make sure all of our agents have the right resources, the right uh, trainings that they need, the right uh, systems, the right processes, and making sure everybody has what they need. Um, so that agent growth, agent success role will be a seat at the leadership table. Tracy oversees um, all of our transaction management, our listing management, our past client care systems. Um, and she has a team of staff and seat and VAs that operate and they can handle, at the current moment, they can handle about 100 transactions a month. Um, and then Emily uh, oversees our finance and admin. Um, and so she provides support to just the overall infrastructure of finance and office management and um, some personal assistance with me as I need lots of help all the time. Um, but this is kind of our staff structure. 
Don't laugh. Sarah. How many? I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Liv's making me laugh. I'm laughing at Liv. Uh, we right. support you. We support you, Jordan. Um, um, what, what how many? How have? many employees do you have with VAs and everything? What do you have right now, then total? Um, I think right now, so we we had uh, fifteen, including VAs. So ten plus five. Um, we've reduced staff by three, but we're hiring three right now. So we'll have um, 10 plus our VAs and VAs is really the way I want to grow from there. If we, mm -hmm. if we can, um, this, a staff structure of this size, um, sh could support 60, 70, 80 agents easily. Um, the only things that we would need support with is sometimes VAs can help us scale and manage more transactions and things like that. And so we have a pro forma and models of how we can grow this to two, 300 agents easily. Um, not easily, but like it's <laughs> scalable. It's scalable, meaning uh, me having two, 300 agents on my team is not possible. It, it, it can't be unless I, unless I create partners and uh, people that can grow their own businesses. And so this is me thinking smarter, not harder. This is me thinking simple, not complex. Um, cause now I have people that were owning different seats and owning different departments. Um, if we have a problem in the transaction management department, the director of agent department, that those two will talk versus agents trying to talk to the transaction coordinator and trying to manage them. And like, it just becomes wonky real quick. Um, so uh, and then one thing but, I would just add real quick is just the overall part arch of this journey is we were a team that was focusing on getting people who are brand new mostly to the real estate industry up and running in a real estate career and now it's expanded that we can have seasoned agents we can have teams and really uh and for jordan i've seen real time i used to see well i saw his calendar and how he was booked you know back to back meetings and Jordan basically became the bottleneck of growth. And so putting, you know, elevating and delegating to these leadership roles has really changed the game. And I know we're running out of time here, just, and this is another topic entirely, but from, I think, you know, the, the challenge in this is to continue to press towards simplifying a business. And one of the investments we've made is into this um, operating business operating system called EOS. And it has given us a lot of guidance. And we've actually hired an implementer to really look at what are the constant, you know, pain points, you know, all small businesses have, and what is a structure that can help solve those. So that's another topic entirely, but that could be a resource that we can help point you to because EOS has really helped um, shape where we're headed in our business. Aaron, do we have any other slides that, what's the next one? I, I don't even remember. Well, they kind of go into that, but I know there's a little bit just of our okay. numbers. Yeah, yeah, go back. And then go back to our structure. The US model. And we're, and we're at nine, just, or nine, Perfect. nine time. Just well, let you know we're on the guys, here, here's, let's just end it there. Um, guys, we we have not arrived and and nor we're going to learn a lot. I could do an updated version of this a, in a year from now and I could tell you all the things that we learned. But here's what I do know. Um, we've simplified and we've created structures. Think of it like this. If you were to throw a bunch of dirt into, you know, like a, a, a plant, what are those things called? Those big barrels that hold uh, dirt that you grow a tomato plant in. And you were to put a dirt in there and you were to put seeds in there and you were to water it. It's going to grow. It's going to grow and there's going to be little tomato things that grow out and it's going to grow over the sides and it's going to grow somewhere. But if you create a trellis, to put in that, it's going to grow the way it's supposed to grow in a healthy way. And so that's all we're doing. We're creating a trellis that allows growth to happen and um, and putting people in place to create the systems and structures that, that can help agents grow. We're in the agent business. We're in the business of helping agents grow really, really successful, manageable businesses. Because if you're an agent in real estate, typically you're either screwed if you're successful because you have no time, or you're screwed if you're not successful because you're broke. And I want to help agents grow healthy businesses where they make good money and they also have good work-life balance and they love their jobs. Um, and I also want to do that for our staff. So that's 
and essentially what we what we're aiming at is we're trying to create structures and systems that allow people to grow awesome <clears throat> thank you i was excited to hear all of this hope you guys were too um looks like i think we're just about out of time so jordan um <clears throat> will you be able to maybe share that breakdown um we'll put it in the drive the google drive if you guys don't have the link we'll We'll get you, make sure you have that. Yeah, we'll send out, uh, cause we have everybody's <laughs> login because you have to register. Um, we'll send yeah. out information. Um, we're happy to share anything and then throw up our uh, our QR codes. If people have questions, they can, you can DM me. Um, I don't know if you have that, Liv. Yeah, they disabled me from- oh, Okay, never mind. Again. Well, just <laughs> Sorry. Find, me on, find me on Instagram and send me a message if you guys have any questions or Aaron. Um, Aaron's really the, the organizer behind a lot of this. I just have lots of big ideas. <laughs> you, you guys are a good team. Yeah. All right, everyone. Thank you for joining. Enjoy the rest of your day. day. We'll Thanks see you all next week. Aaron. All right. Bye. <clears throat>